We finished the last section on metre, looking at the limerick, and that brings us neatly onto this section, of course, which is about forms. Now, what do I mean by forms? I mean some of these traditional um, structures of, of poems, such as sonnets, villanelles, sestinas, dizanes. There's a whole lot of them. Many of them are very traditional, but they're still being used now by modern poets. And usually uh, forms are defined by patterns, patterns of rhyme, of metre, stanza length, the structure of the, the stanza, by syllable count even. There's all sorts of things that say this is a sonnet, this is a villanelle. You know by the way that it's structured. Obviously, if a writer wants to write a sonnet, they're going to need to know what the rules of a sonnet are. But why would a reader want to know? Well, strictly speaking, they don't need to know, but I do think it can be interesting. I know I've had readers read my poems and come and say, why have you used that rhyme scheme? Why have you broken your lines there. And I knew that it was a traditional sonnet rhyme scheme or that I'd counted um, ten syllables in a line. I knew that there was an underlying reason for it, which was a reason of form, but the reader wasn't recognising this. So I do think that for a reader to recognise what the poet is doing can inform the way that they're reading. As I said, although some of these forms are very old, some of them go back many centuries, but they're still being used by poets today. And the, the poets today are adapting them, they're putting a different spin on them. A sonnet was traditionally a love poem, but if you read modern sonnets, they could be about just about anything. And if you'd like to find some modern structured poetry, I suggest you look for some of the books by Wendy Cope. Making, Making Coco for Kingsley Amis is one of her books. And she uses sonnets and she uses pantoum and villanelles. And she puts a very definite modern spin on them. One thing to realise about forms is that they're not restricting. Some poets say, oh, I don't want to bind myself to the rules of a sonnet. I don't want to follow these rules. But in fact, you're not restricting yourself. What you're doing is putting a little enclosure around an area of the poem, but this allows you to, to experiment within that area. So you've blocked off some of the tools, you can't use some of the poet's tools, but this allows you to focus on others. So yes, um, once you've actually decided on the form that you want to use, you can still experiment within that. And you can experiment perhaps with lexis, with grammatical structure, but all within the chosen form. So here we are, we're looking at forms, just we're not going to look at all of them, there are far too many, but we're going to look at some of them just to give you an idea of how these fit into the poet's toolbox.